My name is Paul Kovac, and today I'm speaking here about very important subject, and that is coming of the Lord Jesus Christ back to the earth. Some people don't believe in him and don't even believe he was on this earth. But would you know that there is more proof of existence of Christ in secular in secular writings of Romans and Greeks and, and other nations, more proof of existence of Jesus than of Shakespeare. And people believe in Shakespeare have no problem. <laughs> They should believe in Jesus because it's more, more important to believe in Jesus than in Shakespeare. Now, in the Old Testament, there is over 200 places which announces or pro was prophesied about the first coming of Jesus, his birth, his growth, and his ministry in this world. About 200 and some Passages are witnessing of his coming. And let me tell you something. Everything 100% literally was fulfilled about his first coming. Now, when we come to his second coming, second coming is announced in more than 300 prophecies. And if 200 was fulfilled, literally, we have no reason to doubt his second coming. Over 300 passages in the Bible speak of his second coming. So be prepared, he's coming. Now in the Bible we have all kind of uh, uh, examples by which we can go and uh, compare it and it, it is kind of um, um, uh, just just examples just kind of parables or 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 some uh, uh some stories that put light into his coming and so we can from those stories of the bible and they converge into one which is coming second coming of jesus and we can learn a lot from those different passages from these different stories now one of them is israelites being in egypt you know, while they were in Egypt, Moses would come and do miracles before Pharaoh, uh, trying to persuade him to let the people of God go. Now we see this clash between the light and darkness today. Jesus is forcing the Pharaoh, which is the devil, to let his people go. And Pharaoh knows Satan knows he will not be able to hold us on. And so we see all kinds of these things which Moses did, Moses performed 10 different miracles. God sent him to do that because they are picture of what will happen now when Jesus is coming. And so one of them was, there were magicians. When Moses threw his stuff and it turned into, into a snake, magicians were imitating and they threw their stuffs and each one of them turned into a snake. But you know what happened? Moses' snake ate all the other snakes. And so magicians were kind of uh, humiliated. And today, all those that resist God and are going to uh, uh, resist the work of God, which God is good doing, getting ready his church to take her away, they will be put to shame. We see then... 430 years Israelites were in Egypt and they knew they will come out one day, but they did not know when. But before they were led out, God told Israelites, he said, tomorrow with a mighty hand, I will lead you out. And that's exactly what happened. They had to get ready, and they were ready. Uh, angel of death was passing just prior to de their release. So I'm suspecting it may be some kind of war, maybe war of Gog and Magog before we go. But that's not the final war. One, one of the final wars will happen at the end when Antichrist's rule will be at the end. He will rule for seven years, and then then final battle will come, and, uh, and the, the armies of the world will be defeated. And just as 
Pharaoh's son died and every firstborn in Egyptian family died, those that did not know the Lord. And, uh, but the rest of them, they had to put the blood over the door. You know what that means? That means we must accept Jesus into our life. His blood has to signify that we belong to God. He died for our sins and now his, blood, his, his payment for our sins was his dead and now we are free. We can come to God freely through Jesus Christ and those that don't accept Jesus and have not his blood as a sign in their life, they will be also included in this final destruction. Now, Pharaoh's son died and the sons of these people, because Pharaoh killed Israelites, you know, the little babies were born to the Israelites and he said every son that is born will be killed and daughter can, if daughter is born, don't kill her, but every born Israelite that was male was to be killed. And so at the end, God killed all the, uh, all, all the Egyptian male firstborn because they what they did to Israelites. So this world is killing your sons. This world is leading you, uh, your children away from God. You cannot even raise them as you want. This world is killing your children. This world is taking them to war and many of them never come back. But final God's judgment to this world will be that the sons of this world, sons of those that are resisting God, sons of those that hate God will be removed in this last war. That will be horrible. As, as the Bible describes that judgment, it will be horrible. It will be gruesome. It will be, we don't have words to explain how horrible it will be. People will cry. People will be scared to death. Bible says they will be hiding in the halls of, of, of mountains, into the mountains. And if you look today in Switzerland, you can order uh, hiding underground, there is company which will make holes and make apartment for you to live there for a couple of years after if atomic war comes. That's what they think. And so if you have a million dollars, they will do that in Switzerland for you. There is also in New Zealand, especially the elite of this world, they are building uh, uh, underground holes there in New Zealand, all over United States, Canada. You find all over the world holes and, and, and uh, uh, apartments built under. They think they will be safe when the war comes. But Bible says, you know what Bible says? God said, even if you hide to the highest place, if you hide to the farthest planet, if you hide in the bottom of the sea, if you hide in the holes, everywhere I will find you. God will find every sinner. They will not be able to hide. They will not be able somehow to uh, uh, enjoy after. This is their time and they were treating God's people wrongly and the judgment is coming to this world. Judgment beyond my words to describe it. But you, if you serve God, your time is coming. And Bible says we are not appointed to judgment. So when judgment will be here in the days of Antichrist ruling this world, and that will be seven years, we will be with Christ in his wedding. And it's inter interesting to notice that Jewish wedding lasts for seven days. And that signifies that Jesus Christ's wedding will be for seven years. And so you and I are going to enjoy, if you, if you are a believe, believer, you will be enjoying with me, we will be enjoying a, a, a wedding of the Lamb with His bride. And where will that be? Somewhere in the air. I don't know where. God knows. But we will be enjoying while the judgment of God will be here. And Isaiah speaks of that. Isaiah says, come up, my people, and hide for a moment until the judgment of God passes. And Paul writes about that. He said, we are not appointed to judgment. We are to be free of that. And so, so uh, he Paul writes to 2 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, he mentioned about coming of the Lord. And he said, he said that uh, coming of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. But then he adds, but you brethren, you are not in the night that it will come to you like 
thief in the night. We Christians know our seasons. Season is here. The whole church all around the world, and I know what I'm talking about because I travel, I carry the gospel to over 90 countries, and I'm in constant touch with all over the world, and I'm traveling still, and I know what I'm talking about. The whole church in the in, in, on the whole earth right now feels we are at the end time. We don't know exactly yet when Jesus will come, because God doesn't want us to be slacky. Some people would say, oh, I still have so and so many days. I don't need to get ready. But Bible teaches us we should be ready all the time. All the time. Prepare to go. And uh, uh, God said to Israelites, uh, gird yourself, put the shoes on and get ready because I'm going to lead you out. And so he, he's, it may be that he will reveal to us when he will come later. He may reveal to us exact time. It could be, I don't know, but it could be he will re reveal to us exact time like to Israelites. Get ready because right now I will lead you out or next day I will lead you out or next week I will lead you out. I don't know, but that's in his power. He can do anything, but I want to be ready now and all the time. Are you ready for his coming? Bible says when he comes, there are two words in Greek. One is arpazo, arpazo, which, which means uh, uh, rupture, taking us as a thief in the night. The world will be robbed of the best, of the best. The world will be rob, uh, robbed of the sincere people, of godly people, of pure people. The world will be robbed. Harpazo will happen. Jesus will take his church. And you know what will happen? then sin will hell because we are like salt of the earth. We keep from rottening. We keep this world from rottening. But when, when Jesus comes and church is taken and there is no salt of the earth, then world will rotten. And those who reject Jesus, they will remember how it was nice when Christians were here. And they hate Christians, but they, they, do, they don't want Christianity. But when Christians are gone, those that serve God, not all, everybody who calls himself Christian is Christian. And many of them bring bad name to Christianity because they are not really Christian. But when true Christians are taken away, my brother, my friend, remember, there will be such a time of persecution, such a time of horrible, horrible rule of Antichrist. There will be such a time of killing and, and, and lawlessness beyond anything we can even think when sin has full uh, a power to, 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 to foam, you know, it will be horrible. Right now we are solved. We are holding it back so it cannot fully reveal itself. But I don't want anyone to be left behind. Anyone that hears my voice right now, repent before it's too late. Call on God to save you, to purify you, to cleanse you so you can live new life in him. He will accept you. Even if he comes in one hour, he will still accept you now. Give your life, life to him. Call on him and be ready for those days so you can avoid, you can escape the judgment of God which comes. And that's why we read in the Bible, God says, come out, my people, come out of her, my people. So that's the rapture. God will take us up. And uh, in her pazzo, in this rapture, he will take us up and, uh, and we will not receive part of this judgment which will come. Because if we stay here and judgment comes upon those nations, we may feel it. But we are not appointed to that. It will be just because we were negligent and lazy maybe or maybe uh, resisting Christ and, or maybe putting him later. Do you know that there will be many, many in hell who put Jesus for tomorrow and they never live till tomorrow? Do it today, my friend. Don't put it for tomorrow. There is no time. I guarantee you, you will see in a short time, Jesus will come. This world will be robbed of the best of the best. And then judgment will come and sin will erupt, explode. And the whole world will see what it is living under sin where there is no presence of God. I, 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 I should not say presence of God. God is present all the time, but no presence of God to restrain the evil because we, the church, are restraining force of God and Satan is not free to do what he wants while church is here. And so when church is taken, restraint is taken and he will, he will be in his uh, uh, 
pinnacle of his power and then he will persecute even those who thought they are friends with the devil. They are serving the devil. It's fun to serve him. You will see that it's not fun. If you are left behind, you will regret the moment that you reject Jesus. But it will be too late and too late and too late forever. Now is the time to come and repent. Jesus said, whosoever cometh to me, I shall in no wise cast him away. He is ready to receive you. Would you like to come to him? I'm going to pray for you now. Let's pray. Jesus, I pray for all those that are under my voice, all those that are listening to this message. I pray, oh God, I said what I could. I, 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 I'm not really fully uh, able to express myself as I should. But Lord, you speak to those hearts who heard this message even greater way. Speak to them. Shake them by the power of the Holy Spirit. Save them. Cleanse those who li listen to this message. S make a new cre creation of each one of them and prepare them, Lord, that they may be ready for this great day of your coming and they may go with the church in jesus name i pray let the holy ghost convict hearts of those who are listening in the mighty name of jesus amen